All right, howdy folks. Uh, we're back with the Creative People Show and I have with, with me today my friend Tara Scott Lewis. And she is an actor, a singer, a producer, director, a casting director, <laughs> a jack of all trades. Pretty much after your, you know, <laughs> when you... Jacqueline of all trades, is that how you'd say it? Perfectly? And we're going to have some coffee talk. Coffee and talk. We're going to do coffee talk. <laughs> Oi, I'm the Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to schlep this over here. Uh -huh. Okay. Water. Yeah. Accents. I, you know, you have to become a master of all accents, too, mm -hmm. when you're in shows, right? Right. <laughs> um, did I leave anything out in your introduction? <laughs> well, I mean, I've done a little bit of everything. Oh, and a painter. Amazing artist Aww. with paint. Uh, she's going to show some of her stuff. So she's a varied uh, artist, uh, mm -hmm. very creative. And that's what our show is about, creativity. So uh, just want you to talk about anything you want and I'll or I can ask you a question like uh, for instance uh, as an actor do you prefer actor or actress it's you know it doesn't really matter I know in you. school I have a BFA in theater from Stevens College Stevens College if That's I can not speak my college it's no not Steve <laughs> well I, I go to Stevens <laughs> College now you know th this is new training this is in um, uh, northern uh, it's in Columbia Missouri Columbia. actually yeah, yes yeah. yes and they always said it's just actor you know it's just actor. we're all Everyone's actors. An actor. but you know in Hollywood it's actress and actor and it's kind of one of those things to don't split hairs you know one, one yeah. way or the other yeah yeah so so she acts I act she acts I act out. I don't act <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I, I started really young. Um, I started with a Christian singing group called Sweet Spirits with Tammy Felton. She just passed away, and she was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just a wonderful person. Um, just really inspired everyone. And I think I got a lot from her, you know, mm -hmm. for my own, you know, for my teaching. When I started teaching and coaching later on in life, um, she was just an encourager of everybody, and we would travel around to churches, and we'd travel around, we'd do corporate events, retirement homes, nursing homes, all kinds of things. But I really got a great wealth of, you know, I just, I learned so much from her, I just gleaned so much from her. Yeah. And she just had that heart for people. She wanted everybody to succeed. And I was so nervous to do a solo. I just sang with a group. I would start it at five. And I, she had to pull me out. She's like, no, you're going to do a solo. But she always gave me the Disney songs. We did Christian songs. We did Disney. We did Broadway. Yeah. But she said, you're an actress. Or you're an actor. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so, you know, every song is a monologue. Right. You know, every song. And when I teach, I always tell my students, I want you to recite your song. Mm -hmm. And I want you to do it as an acting piece so that when you sing it, exactly. it's, it's a, and you know, even if you're not the best singer, if you crack, your voice cracks, if you're, if you're a great actor, they're going to believe you. Mm -hmm. And you can use that if you crack or whatever. It's like kind of like a, you know, like you're emotional because in many shows that we've been in, I mean, we didn't have understudies during Christmas. So I lost my voice. Yeah. And so I was losing my voice, so I had to make it a acting choice mm -hmm. and figure out how I'm going to do this so that it's believable for them. So it's just like I was getting emotional because, you know, you just have, you have to do it. You know how it is. The show must go on, yeah. you know. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know. If you don't have somebody, you, you go in. I've been, I've been in where at Silver Dollar City, I'd go off stage, throw up, and then go back on stage. You oh, don't yeah. want to do that, but... That's what yeah. you had to do. That's what the show must go on means. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. And you mentioned uh, the show, or shows that we are in, we're in together, uh, down in Branson, uh, one, of, one of which is called Smoke on the Mountain, the other yeah. is the Sanders Family Christmas. Now, this past year, she became the director and stage director and sharing the role of Vera. Mm -hmm. She does Vera mm -hmm. very well. I love her, her Vera. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and... Uh, and lighting and sound now. And lighting, sound. Sometimes yeah. I sweep up the theater too. Usher. So yes, whatever. Usher. Just put all that on your resume. <laughs> yes, we we do multiple things, both yeah, of us, and we always. just kind of yeah, it's um, yeah. And Stephen, you're always so helpful. Like oh. when I need somebody to pitch in, I'm like, Stephen, can you help me? Yeah, <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. It's it's. I think it's the generation partly mm -hmm. uh, that I grew up in, and. Of course, military. Oh yeah, training, of know, course. Military background. 
Yeah, my dad always thought I would be good in the military. Yeah. He's a first lieutenant from the Vietnam War, and he said, but you'd probably be like Goldie Hawn. <laughs> and Private Benjamin Private is, Benjamin. yeah. He goes, he goes, you'd probably be a little bit like her, but you, I, and theater is very much like uh, military, he says, because it's so structured. Yes. It's got, you know, this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you know, and that's, you know, in the military, you know, it's like you have that, that structure. You don't have to think about what you're going to wear. No, <laughs> exactly. Same That's thing. Same thing in the in in theater because yeah. you know what, what same your costume, costume is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, you have variations sometimes, but uh, sure. Well, I want to go back <coughs> to early days. Uh, you were just talking about something that I have said for years to people. Uh, if you're a good singer and performer on stage, singing and performing, uh, you are an actor. You, people think well, there are two different things, acting and singing. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're good at it in music, you are emoting, your emotions in your face show and display what the words in the song are telling. Mm -hmm. uh, some people stand emotionless and sing a song, sing a happy song right. like this, you know, so that's, yeah. you know, that's not And acting. you don't want to, it's like um, <laughs> even when you go to a concert, it's so much more enjoyable when they are, you know, because you can just get the soundtrack. I mean, you can listen to it, but when you see them, mm -hmm. you don't want to just hear that. It's like, you might as well yeah. just go listen yeah. to them on the radio right. because it's like, I want to see. It's a visual thing. Yeah, yeah. I want to see that emotion. Connections. Yeah. yeah. And when I went to Stevens, um, one of the reasons I chose it, it was 10th in the nation for theater. Um, it is an all women's college, so it's, it was highly competitive. Worked with a lot of different guest artists. That's mm -hmm. what I really liked. Yeah. You mentioned some um, of those. Annie Potts in Designing Women. Yeah. She played um, the grandmother in Young Sheldon. Yes. Um, yes. And she also that. was in Pretty in Pink, one of my favorite movies yeah. growing up. Yeah. Um, she was the cool, edgy uh -huh. record store owner. Yeah. Um, so she goes back to Stevens a lot. And so uh, I worked with her. I worked with... Um, did she did she attend Stevens? She, she yes, she went oh, there. Okay. Yes, and uh, Marianne from Gilligan's Island. Um, yeah. There was a lady from Police Academy. She was kind of the blonde bombshell, uh -huh. um, but she was an amazing vocalist, amazing Marianne, Broadway that's singer. That's Don Wells. You were talking about Don Marianne. Wells is the yeah. Marianne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, and she actually went to Stevens, but was a math major. She was <laughs> ma majored in mathematics. Huh. But went on. I think she might have taken a theater course. I don't know. Yeah. It, it was different back in the day too. There, uh, you know, it used to way back was just a two-year college uh -huh. for like finishing. School. It was kind of like learning how to, I don't know, host parties or yeah. something. You know, soirees. <laughs> but it yeah. was it was a great experience because we had not only guest artists in our shows, we had guest directors. I worked uh -huh. with Car Carol Esty, and she worked in New York. Judy Basing in LA. Uh -huh. So we got that on a resume. I'm working with these people and we could ask them so many questions and they could help us. And then you have those connections after you graduate, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and it just yeah. gives you confidence. That's you nice. do not need to go to school for this, like at all. <laughs> My cousin, Sherry Renee Scott, two time no, nominated for Tonys. I looked her did, up. And yes. She's got several IMDb credits too in yes. film and TV. Yes, yes. So. And she did not go to school. She's like, she said she wished she would have just because this kind of helps you with your confidence. It helps yeah. you just kind of feel a little bit more. But she said, it's you know, you, take, you don't you know, have to. Little, take short acting classes mm -hmm. to help hone your craft and, and figure out, okay, how, would, how does this work? You sure. Know, this and that. Uh, some people have just a natural talent. I've said for years when I, uh, that I have been informally studying acting since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. watching TV and movies sure. on, on TV because I was very observant and I would mimic yeah. the sounds, uh, the characters, and especially yes. cartoons and things like that when yeah. I was a kid. Uh, so I tell, you know, like um, with Sherry, she did get to... She was at New York. She went to New York, and then she did take. She did get in a school that was like an acting type training. Mm -hmm. So she did do. It wasn't a degree program, but she did learn. And and you know, she's just when you don't have a degree in it, you're kind of like a fighter. You know, mm -hmm. like I gotta hustle. I gotta. Fight. You know, she just had that drive. Yeah. She just had that passion, and she's just so talented. And that's what I tell people, like, you do not, if you want to go into this business right away, if you have the talent. Especially now, you can learn just about anything you want uh, about 
of any field mm -hmm. online uh, sure. and, and find local groups, you know, you can, you can train with. Uh, mm -hmm. I, did, I went through a, a training program. It took almost a year called AMTC. What's your favorite, your first or your first role that you uh, think fondly of that you? Well, gosh, there's so many I shows. Know. Oh my goodness. It's so hard to say. Um, one that just pops in my head immediately is Star Mites. It's not a really well-known show, but I got to play tw twins. Oh. And so there was the kind of dorky, nerdy twin, and there was the other twin, and she's that's, she's a superhero girl. That's really cool. So she's she's in. So, so where in the, was this? It was here in Springfield, but in at Springfield Little Theater actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just loved it because. Bazabra. It was Eleanor and Bazabra. So uh, it starts out with Eleanor, and she's in a room, and she's always wanted to be a superhero girl. And you find out later in the end that they were supposed to be in different universe. The nerdy girl that's in space yeah. was it, actually supposed to be on Earth, and the girl that didn't fit in on Earth was supposed to be in oh, outer space. Okay. So it's and I don't look this when I do with the nerdy girl, Bazabra. <laughs> Bubby, nobody likes like me, Bubby. Lily Tomlin. Yes, uh, I stole it. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what you do too when you, like you said, when you watch movies and you're the, Bubby, nobody like me. I'm like, don't fit in. And Eleanor talked normal, but yeah. I had these yeah. fake teeth, these like goofy teeth. Uh -huh. So at the end, it's like she ends up the dirty one. In, on Earth, uh -huh. and then the other one, because she never wanted to be in, she doesn't fit in on, in space, and the other girl, she, she ends up in space, and it's almost like a dreamland thing, and so, but I'd have these quick changes into the Bazaar, but it was so much fun, I mean, yeah. and I swung on this huge rope across the stage, and I mean, it was just a blast. What, what year was that? Oh, gosh, I don't know, Stephen. <laughs> oh, Way my back. gosh. I'm old, I don't know. But, oh, um, stop. and then I like, um, we were talking earlier before we started here yeah. about, you know, I don't usually play villains at right. all, right. you know. Um, so I was in Once on this Island, and they were having auditions, and I said, I well, I, did, I said it to a person beside me. I go, I'd like to sing the male role an octave higher. Mm -hmm. And there somebody shouted out, could, could she sing? And I was like, Oh, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> and so they're like, yeah, come on up. And so I sang it octave higher. And I I thought, I'm going to have to really walk. But when I did it, because I had kind of researched the show, I played it very much like Narnia, hmm. the witch in Narnia. Mm -hmm. Kind of that very kind of creepy, but kind of like, yeah. kind of like hear it. And then just, you know. So, Other world. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. when I when I play a role that I'm like this is not necessarily my cup of tea or what I'm used used yeah. to, yeah. I start to watch movies. I start to and we, you know we, we say coffee talk. So <laughs> I had to have a New York accent in college in the show, and so I watched Saturday Night Fever oh, over yeah. and over yeah. and to talk talk you know yeah. John Travolta's talking like that and the yeah. girl and you know so because I. I was like, okay, and we had we had accent classes. We had mm -hmm. classes where we learned Scottish and Irish and different areas too. Um, we had a class that we had to take uh, to figure out our own speech. So there were different codes you put above above the le the words, and they said I only had two words that I didn't say proper. I didn't say the proper way yeah. um, we all have our own regional dialect you know a li oh, yeah. little bit of sound but um, we had to learn how to talk you know very much you know like a news anchor would or, or something like that mm -hmm. um, so the two words I didn't do is can you what do you, how do you say um, B E E N how do you say it well down here we say Ben yeah and how do you say P E N Pen. So, yeah, those are the two words. Because yeah. I mine was Ben and, and Pen, and it's Ben, it's Ben and Pen, oh, Pen yeah. because the E N. And so I was like, but I got everything well, with else. The British uh, accent would be Bean. Yeah. How have you been? How have you been? Yes, it's it's <laughs> funny, and it, it, that was a very interesting class because a lot of people had huge like 
all these things he said. And they didn't realize until we took this class, like, uh, and then we worked on all the accents and things like that. But it was a lot of fun. I, you know, like I said, you don't have to go to school, but it was just really good for my confidence. Yeah. It was good for me coming into my own. I could have gone and done it right away. But then it was a three, we got done in three years. It was like a career. Every mm -hmm. summer, every yeah. year, oh, and it was wow. just, you know, so straight through right. without a break. Started at 8.30 in the morning, had classes till like 3.30, then we were at the theater all the time. Mm -hmm. um, they had us do more tech, then we did shows, they, um, I did every aspect of the theater, every aspect. Uh, the reason why is they wanted us to see if there's anything else we liked as much or more, plus just to have that respect of every aspect because the right. lighting guy or lighting girl is just as important as that actor mm -hmm. or more important. Yeah, and some actors look yeah. down on the tech crew it's and don't, don't pay so wrong. To them. It's yeah. so horrible yeah. because it takes all those parts. Mm -hmm. It takes all those people. Exactly. And they're they are just, just they're much. on the same level. Mm -hmm. They're no better. They're no they're not beneath you. They're not above you, but you I mean, I always, when I'm in bigger shows... And they with work like, harder and don't get the limelight, like the actors But out they don't front. want it. Yeah. My friends that somebody, were in somebody. tech um, at Stevens, they had to take an acting class, and they hated it. They're like, oh, my yeah, gosh, I yeah. hate this. I don't. They don't want that. My wife is like that. She'd yeah. rather be behind the camera. Right, behind the scenes. So it takes all the parts, all those moving parts. And I don't even see a director any higher. I don't. I yeah. think it's... It takes them, you know, and I, when I direct, I do like to, you know, talk to my actors because I want to know, I want them to grow and make their role how, you know, how they see it. You know, I, I give notes, but if there's something that you're motivated to do for a reason, yeah, let's, you know, let's visit about it. And, yeah. and as we've done these shows multiple times, I tell people it's a job. It's a job. Yeah. When you do thou a thousand shows or two thousand shows or however many shows, you have to keep it fresh. So that's why the inner monologue is so important. You know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and then layering your character differently, you know, because having to change some things because it's like, I, I need to find something new. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I want to have, I'm going to have a little bit different relationship with Uncle Stanley this year, or I'm going to have yeah. a little bit different relationship yeah. just to build upon that. And then the backstory. You know, where did you grow up? What is your mom and dad? What do they look like? Did you did you grow up on a farm? Did you and and that just makes it so much more fun. And yeah. even if you're in the chorus and you have zero lines, I'm talking zero lines, you need to have a name for yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to have a backstory because that's the chorus person you're gonna look at and find so interesting. Right. And just know there's no small parts there really aren't right. I mean every part is integral and I've been at so many shows even on Broadway and I'll be watching the chorus over here and think it's so interesting because there's they've built a character they've created something so there's always going to be some eye on you at all times yeah. even when you're not saying anything and acting is reacting mm -hmm. so when you have no words you have no lines I need to know exactly what you're thinking and I find it really interesting when there are parts in shows that have very few lines because I love just seeing that. Mm -hmm. If you can act without... In a, in a big theater, you're talking about theater, theater yeah, acting. Yeah, huge. In a big theater, facial expressions aren't seen well. Correct. But in our theater, it's so small. Yes. The Even the fifth row back, which is the back row in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, can if they have good eyesight, they can see our facial mm -hmm. expressions and our, our nuanced movements and things like that so Absolutely. we don't get real big mm -mm. Uh, in our show i mean uh, yeah and i i prefer that setting um the reason being is i feel like it's just like you can feel the audience you should see them and mm -hmm. it's just so beautiful because they're part of our show they're it's, they're yeah, part of the congregative we don't have the fourth wall no like and yeah and we have to also play to the side so oh, it's yeah. it actually <laughs> a more difficult art form we're we're bare bones as far as we're intimate it's not like a huge production um in a huge i've been in the massive shows like i was at sight and sound in noah in those huge shows you don't feel that connection as much not as intimate and it's it's very um well, how do i say it when you're like that and 
and also Disney productions like um, Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. and those productions on Broadway that they've done. It ha Disney and Sight and Sound are similar in this sense. Um, you, they have a vision and it's like almost like a painting. It's like you're going to be at this number at this point and when this happens or that happens or this animal comes on, you need to look up and then down and then you need to turn here. I mean, it's very exact. Yeah. It's very exact because they have a... Animatronic. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> basically, I mean, but they have a, a very set vision yeah. and it's a very... Out. And that's There's same so many with moving parts on the stage. Yes, in a big production like and the that. same they with D Disney, and okay. they but they really there's no freedom in like as far as like ha they have a set, your character. set way. I mean, yeah. you know, they want you to explore your character, but they they have a set way that things are said and where you're standing. Right. So it it's different. It's very different. Um, like I said, I prefer the more intimate um, what we have, just because it depend. You know, it changes, yeah. and we yeah. we are right there with each other. We're right there with them, and it changes as you know. <laughs> when people throw skittles on stage, <laughs> we have people that throw skittles, and oh. then we started eating the skittles, oh, yeah. made it part of the crazy. show. Or when people throw rubber ducks, <laughs> that happens. I was a little kid. Yes. She had her little rubber duck. Rubber she duck, threw it out on right stage. on stage. Yeah. We made it part of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I like, I love our show. I mean, I just, I love it so much. I think it's such a good show right now um, because you, of the pandemic. You're always and saying this. It, it's a, it started as an off-Broadway production. Correct. A uh, book show. it's the only book show mm -hmm. that we know of in Branson. Uh, yeah. There's one other one now. Um, it's not full-time. Okay. Um, it is a Broadway. It was on Broadway. It's all hands on deck. Oh yes. Yes, yes. that's it's yes. kind of new. But it's not. Um, I think they only have. They don't. Ha they just have a handful of shows this year. But they are doing that. Uh, I think they're gonna maybe tour it around. I'm not sure. But but yes, that is. And then our show has been. Mm -hmm. It's been there over 25 years, I think now. Two of so, our cast are also in all hands on deck. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sarah Eric and Joy. Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, Eric and Sarah. Um, and that's the cool thing about what we do, too, is many of the people in our show are in multiple other shows mm -hmm. around town. So if people come to our show, they'll see them maybe somewhere else. And so that's cool. Yeah. And um, I like our show because it's set, set in 1935, Depression era. And with the pandemic happening and people losing jobs and things happening in people's lives. I mean, it's been a really tough time for people. Yeah. So I think this show really speaks to people's hearts more than maybe even in the past. It's got a faith-based message, but it is a off-Broadway show, so it's a book show. It's not a Christian show. I mean, it has the message. Um, it has that a Christian message, but it's, it pokes fun at all the stereotypes in church. Yeah. And what I found very interesting about the show is that Christians love our show and atheists love our show mm -hmm. because it's just, the, the characters are kind of heightened. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh, it's almost, it's not Saturday Night Live, but it's no. those heightened, <laughs> kind of those kind of poking fun, but we're not right. making fun of God. We're not making fun of Christ no. or we're not making fun of Christians. Kind of making fun of ourselves. Yes. Really. And the people, but it's like, oh, I knew that person in church. Oh, I, that's that person in church. I grew up in small country churches yeah. in Texas and Arkansas, mm -hmm. much like this, this. So you're like, that is my life. That's what I know. Yeah. And I think that the atheists that have liked it, um, it's, they might have grown up in church and now are not part yeah. of it, but they're like, oh, that's fun. Oh, Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but it's that to me that is a really nice thing because it seems like everybody really enjoys it. Yeah. I think the only people that are more critical are I don't know what churches they maybe go to, but they're real, real strict or rigid in, in something and they think we're making fun and we're not yeah. at all. It's some people just not at all. don't quite understand what we're doing. Right. Because uh, I see it on their face. They're trying to figure <laughs> us out. What, what is What this? about the people that think we're really a family and they're very yeah. disappointed afterwards? Yeah. See, we're such good actors that think, <laughs> and actually we are. Well, the casting is, is part of that. And too. I also yeah. think we are family. Yeah. I would no, never no, do nudity. Just, no. I would never do, I would never do that kind of scene. Now, kiss is one thing, but anything past that, I, I don't think I would yeah. feel comfortable with. Um, no. Personally. 
Yeah. Nothing wrong with people that you know. Everybody has their a line their that line, you have to right? Draw. Right. Um, so, I, I put that's in there. That's good. That's good training and and um, information for up and coming actors. Uh, find out where your line is. Mm -hmm. Talk it over with your significant other, and discuss. Okay, I would. Wouldn't you want you to go past this line? Right. Okay. And, and so you know and understand right. beforehand. Also, I kind of drew my line in college. I did a show that was kind of, um, oh, it it was kind of uh, had some undertone against the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. uh, we had p people pick it, and it made me feel bad because it wasn't like, I it made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of set in my mind, there are certain things that I I won't be able to do because I don't, it's, I was acting, it was a show. And so you have to really set that boundary and really stay firm, um, in that because it, you know, it can eat at you. Mm -hmm. And so just knowing that, and I'm going to go kind of into something else now. I started out when my first job was Fox 27 kids club host and coordinator mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on TV. I never, I, I did, we had one semester of film in college. Yeah. Uh, so I was a baptism by fire. I was thrown in. <laughs> I was the actor, producer, writer. I didn't edit, but I directed my editor how yeah. to edit. Yeah. And I didn't realize how much this was going to do. I was like, oh, uh -huh. I'm doing this. But it was so good for me because I learned all these aspects very quickly I knew a little bit about it growing up in the advertising business. My dad had an advertising agency. So being in that business as a child and being around that and growing up, watching, going on set, going on location, doing those things, um, I kind of absorbed some. And I think I kind of had it in me to, it, to be natural. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and we did kids' events. We did um, contests. It was so much fun. We had this huge attic of all these toys, mm -hmm. and I got I got to get some toys too. Um, <laughs> I had um, we had Garfield, and I loved Garfield growing up. Yeah. We had Batman, and we had oh my gosh, the little Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Oh, I loved yeah. them. I had oh the, the, the big eyes. Oh, yeah. so cute. So we did all these things, and we wrote they would write letters to you. Yeah. The kids mm -hmm. would write letters. So I was the first female host they ever had. Uh, and the two before me just did a blanket a letter to the kids and it said, hi, I'm Marco. You know, it was just a kind of Form a type, letter. yeah, formal yeah. thing. And they just signed their name and put their picture in there. Mm -hmm. Like they're funny, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of their, it was our kind of goofy headshot, you know, it's cause it's a kid's club. Yeah. And so, and same with Mike Malibu before Marco. But I went home on my own time, hand wrote letters to each child. Wow. And there was this little girl in Cassville, Missouri, that asked me, she wanted me to be her mom. She was so sweet. Oh. She, like, we bonded. She wow. just didn't have a closeness with her fa family. Yeah. And she found me as, like, a mother figure just via TV and writing letters. Because I just, I've always had... My minor was well, an emphasis. I have an emphasis in child development mm -hmm. and also in music. Yeah. Um, so we, at Stevens, they had a school. And I was in charge of the Down Syndrome children. And they were amazing. Oh, and yeah. I just loved it. Also, um, during college, um, I took one semester off because we graduated in three years. And I was like, I need a break because this is just so much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was like, I'm going to take one. And so I taught at a preschool and I was a waitress. And um, I just love these kids. It was pre-kindergarten kids. I had the five-year-olds. And I just love that. And I love teaching kids. I mean, I've mm -hmm. coached and taught kids and got mainly getting them prepared to audition for a show or audition for colleges for scholarships uh so that's really fun to me i mean i love the whole process of it.